What should hosts and owners be planning for in an economic downturn or an increasingly competitive market? Both could mean a reduction in potential customers. Or does it? Will supply outstrip demand? Will demand reduce because of less disposable income per person? Should you be worried about the direction the economy is going in and how it will affect this industry? These are all big questions I will attempt to answer today. Welcome to episode 18. Glamping and unique holiday rentals are surging in popularity with the growing desire of customers to book holidays that deliver an experience. They are also the new business of choice for those wanting to improve their work-life balance. So how do you build a strong business like this that gives you the life you need and a great investment? I'm Sarah Riley and I want to share what I've discovered after being immersed in this industry for over 20 years to inspire you to find out more about what's going on. Welcome, this is the business of glamping and unique holiday rentals. Hello and how are you all? If you're listening to this episode when it first gets released, it's almost the end of the season. If you can see me now, I'm doing a Mexican wave for you all because I'm sure you're all very excited to be at the other end of a season. You've had all of that work you've been doing and you've come out of it and you're feeling amazing, but you're tired and you need to rest and you just need a little bit of you time, and I totally get that. So hopefully you'll be able to relax with this episode. I'm going to make it as painless as possible, even though we're going to be dealing with a very big subject. Now, this one was inspired by a question from Henry. Thank you, Henry. Really, really pleased that you did this and you sent it in. I'm very grateful when people ask me questions and I'm able to respond directly on this podcast. I think that's what this podcast should be about, answering your questions and finding out stuff that's really going to help you. And so that's why I'm here now. But it's also very, very relevant because of what's going on in the UK at the moment with Brexit. I mean, quite frankly, what is going on with that? Oh my goodness, I don't think anybody knows what's going on with that. And as a result, I'm not going to talk about it. But there's all kinds of other things going on around the world as well, which is making this a particularly unstable time. Now, we all remember the 2008-2009 financial crisis. At the moment, there are things happening which are a little bit reminiscent of that time. Now, for me, it was a very memorable time because I damaged my neck at that time and I had a major stroke and it nearly cost me my life. And I talk about that in more detail in episode 14. And that's not what I'm going to talk about now. But at that time, I was on maternity leave when it happened. And there was so much turmoil at the time. There had been the major financial crash. Things were happening and the banks were going broke and losing our money and things were happening that had never happened before and it was just a shocking time. And I decided at the time, because of what I was personally going through, to request voluntary redundancy. So not only had I had a stroke, I had two very small children and the youngest was two weeks old. And I was also made redundant. It wasn't a difficult decision, though. I was struggling. And at the time, I considered myself very lucky because actually my decision was my decision. Some people at that time really weren't so lucky. The decision was taken out of their hands and they ended up uh, having to take redundancy without their choice. So after the crisis, some industries really faltered and went into recession and are only now just beginning to recover. Some of them haven't recovered at all. But what was really interesting was how that time, in my opinion, was the beginning of the complete growth of the glamping industry. Now, in my investigations about glamping worldwide... I found a little known journal called the Journal of Outdoor Recreation and Tourism. This noted that this industry 
had stellar performance during the global financial slowdown and urged for further research. This is really interesting stuff. Now, I've written in depth about this on Inspired Camping and I'll leave the link in the show notes for episode 18 because this is episode 18. So that's www.inspiredcamping.com slash 018. Now, it gives my reasons in that article about why I think glamping has moved from a trend to a significant industry and business model and how it's lots of external factors that have made that happen. And it's really interesting because this journal, the Journal of Outdoor Recreation and Tourism, actually noted a little bit of that as well, about what actually had happened, that glamping actually became a really interesting new industry that was showing real growth and performance during a time when so many other industries were going downhill. Why was this? Now, while competition is not necessarily a threat, in my opinion, again, I think this is good because healthy competition in an industry means that there is money to be made in that industry that people are buying things in that industry and that they're interested in it. What you do not want to do is enter an industry where there's very little competition because this means there's not really enough money to go around. This means that unless it's a very new thing and a very new trend and you're seeing something that other people aren't seeing, that it's very likely that there's just not enough interesting business to go around. So an economic downturn is slightly different. But during these times, people still want and need vacation time with their families and an opportunity to relax. But what they do is they start looking for something different. The thing that they look for is fueled by their current situation. So it could be they have less money or they have less time or they are able to go less far. It could be a lot of different reasons why they might be looking for something different. And this is part of the reason why glamping showed such stellar performance during the global financial slowdown. Because people started looking at ways they could still have a really lovely, luxurious holiday and yet they would be able to maybe not spend so much money because they could have the whole family go and the price of the glamping holiday would then be cheaper. Which basically translates into the fact that customers change their buying behavior and they change the decision-making that they make about what they want to buy. And that is fueled and motivated by what's going on in the economy and what's going on with local competition and competition within an industry. So of course, this is all my opinion. It's based on research that I've done things that I've been involved in in my time in this industry, which has been quite a long time, but also it's the findings that I've had in reports and the conversations that I've had with other experts within the industry. And so what I'm going to do now is just suggest a few things, a few reasons that I think glamping has shifted and changed because of the economy. So first of all, it's worth noting that glamping has attracted a completely different market segment. So glamping is all the benefits of staying in a five-star hotel, but while enjoying the best bits of being out in nature, such as being around a campfire, cooking over a campfire, letting the kids run around in the fields, being able to stargaze. I mean, how magic is that when you see a starburst? These are times when memories are made. And everyone knows that and they want to do that. The great thing about a glamping holiday is that it has the luxury. It also has the fact that it's easier because, you know, quite frankly, camping can be quite hard, especially when you are camping with your family because you have to remember all the items you need to take to keep everyone happy. You have to pack it all yourself, take it to the campsite. You have to set it all up. And then, of course, you have to take it all down at the end of the holiday. Whereas glamping, it's all done for you. You just turn up, you enjoy your holiday, you have all the best bits of camping, and yet it's all with very little effort from you. 
but the great thing is you have all those benefits plus those holidays can be cheaper as a whole because the whole family can go stay together have these experiences make these memories for a lot less money a very important factor when considering an economic downturn Plus, the added benefit is that the family is out in nature. Now, we all know that when you are suffering from stress or anxiety, the best thing you can do is to connect with nature. It really helps the body adapt to the situation that it's faced with. I write about this and the additional health benefits of camping and glamping on Inspired Camping, and I'll include that link in the show notes as well. But there's lots of other reasons why glamping has shown such growth. And, you know, some of those are the fact that the celebrities are endorsing it, other people on YouTube and influencers are endorsing it. It's a new trend. It's a new thing to do. It's experiential. So that's all. It's all about experiences. And we know that everybody loves experiences these days. You know, they want to be photographing themselves and posting themselves on social media, having these amazing experiences. And glamping delivers that. But what happens if the economy starts to turn down. How would you, as an owner of a glamping business or a unique holiday rental business, how would you survive that downturn? And what would you do to be able to compete against a lot more inventory coming in of other people setting up similar businesses? So here is a short list of suggestions of things you could consider to help protect yourself from an economic downturn. And this is not an exhaustive list. There are lots of other things you could do. But from my perspective, these are the easiest things you could do. And they would cost the least amount of money, but they do require you to put some time and effort into it and particularly around thinking in a creative way how you might be able to introduce this. So let's get started. So my first suggestion is about making the most of all of your assets. So when I'm saying assets, I mean your land, your buildings and your skills. So if you have certain skills in certain areas that you think you could share that could actually enhance the service you give, then that is something that is equally as important as maybe converting an old barn to host community events or communal events or retreats or anything else you might be doing. So make the most of all your assets. Think about what you have and then how you might be able to apply that to making your business stronger. In everything you do, think about how you can stand out from the crowd and get heard. This is all about being visible. If you are visible at a time when the economy is struggling and things are difficult, you are much more likely to be able to attract customers when others are not. And the other thing that you can do to really help yourself with this is to think about how you can be different. Be different with your brand, be different with your offer and also your service, but not just about what you can offer. Think about What does your customer actually want? So when considering all of those things and how you can be different, think about it from your customer's point of view. Especially when times are changing and things are changing, what do people need? What do they need from you and what will help them? And that means that you'll be able to attract them into what you have to offer. You'll be able to speak to them in the right way. You'll be able to communicate with them and really hit the nail on the head when you're actually trying to make a relationship with your future customers. And along those lines, make sure you know who they are. How do they think? What's important to them? What's their pain points? What do they really struggle with? How can you help them with all of those things? And how can you can really communicate in that way? Understand how to speak to them. This is about making relationships and forming bonds, really connecting in everything you do from the blogs that you write, 
from any content that you're putting on social media, your images, the text that goes with those images, talk to them in a way that they will understand and that will really resonate with them. That will absolutely and utterly draw them in like a beacon and it will make them think that you have something to offer them and that they want to explore that more. But in all of that, don't ignore the need to automate your systems as much as possible. If you are a small business, and mainly I support small businesses, then you really need to think about how you can automate your systems. There's only a few of you, you only have a few resources, so actually have systems up and running, ticking along in the background, doing things that will mean that it's freeing you up to do something else, that is invaluable. So these are things such as publishing content on a schedule, It is about when someone books a stay with you that automatically the guest will be sent emails, confirmations, information that they need and everything else to reassure them automatically. It will help them really bond with you before they get there. It will help them feel that they've made the right decision about buying a service from you. And all of these things can happen automatically. You don't need to do this yourself anymore. It can free you up to do other things, such as continuing to build your business to make it stronger. But also think about what is your customer attraction strategy? If there is an economic downturn, if there is more competition, it's likely that you will be fishing from a smaller pond in terms of customers. So you need to really think about what's your customer attraction strategy? What are you actually doing to make sure that customers are seeing you and what you have to offer? And make sure that you have a plan in place to be heard, to be seen, to be visible. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I see new businesses make in this industry is they put all their time and their passion and their energy into setting up their business. The actual things on the ground, the services on the ground, the staff in place, the the beds, the pillows, the sheets, everything that they're going to be doing. But they fail to think about their marketing. Marketing is so important because you may have all of these assets, all of the glamping assets and things that you can offer to your customers. But how are you going to get your customers to actually pay you to stay there? There's no point in having all those assets if you don't have customers to fill your beds. This is about getting heads in beds. This is so important. And if you are going to enter this industry, one thing you have to get good at is marketing. This is a really marketing heavy industry, especially if it becomes more competitive and especially if there is a downturn in the economy. You don't have a shop front. You're not on the high street with lots of people walking past your shop front to see exactly what you have to offer and then to come in your door and buy something from you. Your shop front is your website on the internet. It's your booking channel on the internet. It is the way you speak to people on your social media on the internet. This is an industry that has to rely on its online impact. So it is also a time to think about how you might be able to learn new skills to help you, to be able to use tools that you didn't ever know how to use before, but they're there to help you to find customers and therefore, you know, learn how to use them. So one thing, for example, you could do is you could learn how to use Facebook ads and Google ads to find customers directly online, to put together some graphic design that will help to really stand out and be different from your competitors and to be noticed by your customers. To really put some time into connecting with your customers and building a community of customers. So for example, if your business is all about retreats and health and glamping breaks that are connected to that, then why don't you build a community around health and wellness and that kind of support because then when you are ready to launch your business you already have a community of people who are eager to learn more from you and if that means coming to visit you and stay in your glamping accommodation that's something that adds another level to their connection with you. 
I have seen it time and time again that when businesses are able to really open up that type of connection with their customers, it really reaps dividends. So really understand what skills you might need and what new facilities you might need to put in place to help you ride the wave of an unstable market. I think it's really worth me mentioning that there has never been a better time in history when we have all the tools at our disposal within easy reach, which we can get most of them through our computers and through the internet to help us boost our businesses. We can find all the customers we want, we can find all the help we want, and it's just a small distance away from us. It's all we need to help us protect our businesses, especially if there is a time of challenge ahead. Now I can completely understand how it might feel a little bit nerve wracking at the moment for a new owner coming into this industry because this is a time of political unrest. This is a time of unpredictability. We have got a history of seeing things we've never seen happen before, such as banks going bust. And that can leave real anxiety within us about what we should or shouldn't be doing with a new business adventure. But the key is to really think about what you have and what you are going to offer to learn from your competitors. Now, your competitors will tell you through their own actions and what they're doing, what works in this industry and what doesn't. Both of these things will really help you prepare for a potential economic downturn. Also, focusing on what you offer, how you offer it, how you are connecting to your audience and how you are converting them into customers. So have you got your conversion tactics in place? These are all needed these days because there are so many distractions competing with you, with your customers, and you need to be the ones standing head and shoulders above your competitors using the right tactics. And also think about the systems you're setting up to achieve all of that and where possible, making it automated so you're taking the pressure off you. The pressure needs to be taken off you so that you can then deliver a great service. But most of all, remember to inject a bit of magic into what you do and how you offer it and loads of your own unique personality because that will make you stand out from the rest, help your customers connect to you and it will keep them coming back for more. I've really enjoyed thinking through this question that was put forward by Henry, and I hope my opinion has been of help. It's kind of helped clarify things for you. And certainly if there's anyone out there listening to this podcast and you've got any specific questions about this industry, what's going on in the industry, or anything else that you can think of, I'd be really interested to hear from you. So if you go to the show notes, www.inspiredcamping.com forward slash 018 as this is episode 18 then you can contact me through those show notes and I'd be really interested to hear from you if you've got any questions. I really do hope you found this useful and I'm looking forward to hearing from you all. I also hope I might get to see some of you next week at the glamping show and towards the end of October at the glamping summit in the USA. I'm really excited to be going. I can't wait to share everything that I've been working on. I've got some fantastic creative marketing solutions for you to help you boost your businesses for the future. And I'm really excited to share that with you. In the meantime, if you're at the beginning of your journey of setting up a glamping business, you may want to check out my quiz to find out if you are cut out to run a glamping business. You can find that over on www.inspiredcourses.com forward slash quiz. And that's also the place where I offer loads of resources to help you on your journey and to jump ahead of the crowd. And if you're interested in having some of those resources, then again, just go over to www.inspiredcourses.com forward slash resources. Take care and see you here again soon.